Television. Welcome to this week's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting. Originating from the County Administrative Center, located at 1115 Truxton Avenue in Bakersfield, California. Grounded in ideas, energy, and innovation, Kern County's vision is to be a driving force for the world's fifth largest economy. And our mission is to exceed expectations of the communities we serve, changing the way they feel about government, those who manage it, and the services it provides. Today's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting will convene momentarily. Board to reconvene. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Supervisor Peters. Here. Supervisor Scribner. Here. Supervisor Maggard. Here. Supervisor Couch. Here. Supervisor Press. Here. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the Tuesday, November 29th, 2022, 9 a.m. meeting of the Board of Supervisors. We will begin today's meeting with the flag salute led by Supervisor Maggard. And if we could ask you, please remain standing for a moment of prayer, silence, or meditation, whichever you prefer. Rise. Thank you. Please be seated. Next, I'd like to call on Nick Cullen. He is our Director of Animal Services to introduce our Pet of the Week. Good morning, Nick. Good morning to you. Who do we have today? This is an interesting looking fellow. Um, his name is Dilly. Uh, Dilly is uh, he's a walking argument. And by argument, I mean anybody you want to determine what breed he is, there might be an argument that's involved. He, uh, he's a short thing, though. He's only about 25 pounds, um, but he uh, looks like a large breed dog, and I'm, I'm holding him, so if that does any justice to his actual size. He's short, um, but he's a cool dog. Uh, he gets along with other dogs very well and loves just about every person he comes across. He's available for adoption right now. All right, well, best of luck to you. Look forward to seeing him, him adopted. Thank you, Nick. His staff is usually great at determining the, the breeds, and so if they're, they're confused, then Dilly really is presenting a challenge. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll begin by considering the consent agenda, and agendas are located on the tables near the doors for anyone wishing to follow along. So all items listed with a CA above the item are considered to be routine and non-controversial by county staff. Consent items will be considered first and may be approved by one motion. If a member of the audience wishes to comment or ask questions regarding an item on the consent agenda, they may do so prior to a vote being taken. A member of the board may remove any item from the consent agenda and will be considered in listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the board concerning the item before action is taken. A member of the public may also comment on any closed session item. And, and so I will now read the consent agenda numbers. Starting on page two, we have items two through eight, all on consent. On page three, items 11 through 17 on consent. On page four, all items on the page 18 through 26 are on consent. Page five, all items 27 through 33 are on consent. Page six, all items 34 through 41 are on consent. And on page seven, items 42 through 48 on consent. Finally, on page eight, items 49 and 50 are on consent. And so at this time, I'll ask if there's any members of our audience that would like to make any comments or ask any questions on those consent agenda items. Okay, I'm not seeing any. Then I'll return to the board for any questions, comments, or a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. You have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. All eyes. Thank you. That now brings us back to page two of our agenda, item number one, under resolutions and proclamations. This is to proclaim November 6th through the 12th, 2022, as California Retired Teachers Week in Kern County, and Supervisor Peters will be making this presentation. Thank you, Chairman. A motion to approve? Second. You have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. Mr. Peters, can you hit the button? 
Thank you. The motion is approved. All ayes. Chairman, uh, members of the board, I'm honored to share this proclamation today, uh, proclaiming November 6th through the 12th, 2022, as California Retired Teachers Week in Kern County. Uh, thinking back to when I was in school, I probably would have uh, been the person more likely to cause a handful of teachers to retire than the person presenting the proclamation, but uh, I'm honored to do it. and. Uh, we have with us Dr. Mahoney today, and I would like to, to uh, share this proclamation. Uh, the Board of Supervisors of the County of Kern, State of California, has officially proclaimed November 6 through 12, 2022, as California Retired Teachers Week in Kern County. And this recognition has been entered into the board minutes and signed by our Honorable Chairman, Zach Scribner. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Can have you stand for a photo? Sure. Oh. Sure. You open that, and I'll get you to get it. I'll get the check. <laughs> oh, you have a sign. Excellent. A check. Beautiful. Oh, you hold right. that there. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Ready? One, two, three. I'm going to do one this way. One, two, three. Excellent. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. All right. I'll well, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you. You bet. Well, good morning to you. I'm a retired teacher moment. Right now, I want you to think of your favorite teacher, and each one of you had one. Perhaps most of those teachers are retired now. However, if they're still living, it's a good bet they're still volunteering and teaching others, just like you're doing. I come to you today on behalf of the California Retired Teachers Association to highlight the continuing efforts of retired educators in California, and specifically, those retired teachers in Kern County. Now these retirees are exceedingly active throughout this community. In 2021, they invested over $42,000 in scholarships to provide future teachers for Kern County classrooms. We made a significant investment in the future of education in this city and town and county. We also awarded over $1,400 to beginning teachers because, as you all know, beginning teachers have no problem getting money from their administrators. No problem. In 2021 alone, Kern retirees gave over 66,000 hours of volunteer time with a value of $2.3 million. They support programs and services throughout the county, such as the Bakersfield College and CSUB food banks for needy students. Ronald McDonald House, Women's Shelter, Kern County Spelling Bee. We re -re resurrected that event, and it's been a high, a big success ever since. So we do Salvation Army Bell Ringers, Panorama Vista Preserve, California Forest Service, and the Kern County World War II Memorial, which will be having its opening on the 10th of December. Hope to see you all there. None of, the, none of this counts the hours the individual members have put into services like Rotary, women's clubs, guild house assistant leagues, churches and synagogues. We are the backbone of many organizations that contribute to Kern County. When your favorite teacher retired, they really went to work, and most are still working for a better Kern County. Please remember their teachings, because it's how you got to be where you are today. I thank you for, on behalf of the retired teachers of Kern County in California for this proclamation. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great presentation. Okay, next we are going to hear public presentations. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the board on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the board. Board members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the board at a later meeting. Also, board, <clears throat> excuse me, also, the board may take action to direct staff to place a matter of business on a future agenda. So at this time, I'll ask if there's any members of our audience that would like to make a public presentation. You are limited to two minutes, and we ask that you state your name, please. Good morning, board. Good morning. 
Good morning, clerk. My name is Vera Gooden, and I am from Bakersfield, California. I work here. I'm an IHSS worker. Been an IHS worker since 2008, and I really care about my job. I'm here because there's a few things that we need, like dental, health, uh, vision. We need these things. We also need a raise. Uh, there was an offer made to us, and the offer was 40 cents. I think I came out of slavery already. I think that I came, my ancestors made a way where I can get a lot more than 40 cents because I can't buy gas, can't pay my rent, can't buy food, and I'm working, and I'm struggling here. So I need some help. So I need y'all to consider that $2.50 and everybody that's supporting me, stand up. Get up on your feet because we need to stand strong. And I am asking you to go back in there and make a different decision. $2.50 is not a bad decision to make to us. We're first responders. When the ambulance come to the client's house, they call us. And they say, uh, we have Mrs. So-and-so, so-and-so here, Mr. Whatever, so-and-so here, and we need to know their history. They call us. So give us that respect, please. Give us that respect. Treat us like human beings and give us that $2.50. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Who will be next, please? Hello, board members. My name is Shania Spellman. I am also an ISS worker. I'm, I'm um, sorry, I didn't catch your name. Shania Spellman. Sw what's the last name? Spellman. Thank you. Uh, I am also an ISS worker. I've been an ISS worker since 2018 um, when I helped a client off the street, took them in, and started working for them. Um, we are, as, she, as the person before me said, we're in a situation where we're struggling to make ends meet. You know, we can't, we can't pay for gas, can barely pay for food, can barely, you know, get, just, just get our basic needs met on the current salary, what we're currently working for. Um, we are constantly under mental strain trying to help people because these are all people who not only physically need our help, they mentally need our help. We are, we're doing multiple jobs that we're not really being paid for. We're the cleaner, we're the cooker, we're the gardener sometimes, depending on if the person can get out their house because of what's going on in the front. We are doing, we're have, we have multiple hats on a constant basis and we're not being paid properly for it. Then on top of that, we're not getting any health benefits out of it. You, I can't even go see a therapist if I need to after I have worked for somebody who is mentally declining and I'm watching them go down, a person that I'm, that I'm genuinely trying to help and care for. I, I, we need more, not just want more, we need more. So I'm asking this board to help us, to, 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 to help us get the things that really we deserve. We, we, we need more than we are given and this, this is the, the point that I wanted to make today because what else can we do? We, we, we're looking to you to help us. We're looking to you to give us what we need, not won't need. And that's what I wanted to say today. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Sydney O'Connor. I am from Tehachapi and I've been a caregiver since 2014. I have been a caregiver for my partner who is legally blind. He's a double transplant patient. He was a former renal patient. Uh, I have to help him take his medications every single day. I have to be his eyes. I have to make sure that he can navigate the world like any normal person can. And I I'm here today because over 500,000 hours of home care are going unmet in this county each year. That's a serious amount of people who either get inadequate care or no care at all. And the reason for this is clear. Our work is not seen as real work. So people rely on us doing the work regardless of the hours allocated to our patients and also 
rely on low wages because we will do this work regardless. And since the cost of everything is going up, I would like to add, I need to spend my credit card money on groceries just to get by. I don't make enough just to, <laughs> so I'm drowning in debt <laughs> and trying to care for the people that I care for. Um, I recently had to quit working for one of my clients because of my, a back injury. I tried to get her out of the shower. We both went down. Who's going to do this work? It's work. But people who care. Vulnerable people will go without care that this board has the power to fund. This is your chance to show leadership in this county by start, starting to invest in caregivers. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Sandy Moreno. Um, just like the previous uh, previous caregiver said, we I also take care of a family member. I take care of my grandmother. A lot of people um, have to leave their career in order to take care of somebody else. What I was getting paid after that, I thought it was going to be easy. I thought it was going to be something that will help me while I'll take care of her. But first of all, she wasn't given the, the hours she needed, right? So that's unmet need. And second of all, I'm getting paid a third of what I was getting paid before, right? And so a lot of folks like me have to go through the same thing, right? On top of that, there's no health care benefits. A lot of folks that come from other counties to here, they lose their health care benefits, right? Because some of them are not in that threshold economically, right? To get Medi-Cal or any other health insurance. We're here to, honestly, we're tired of begging, right? We're tired of uh, you, Nickel, and diming us. Right? We're tired of just um, feeling like we're not valued, not respected. Right? We have to work 24-7 with family members that otherwise would be in the nursing home. That the nursing homes will charge a bunch of money just to get a haircut for the patient. That's what happened to my grandmother. She was in the nursing home for a year. I brought her out, brought her back to health. Right? This is the, the work that we're doing. Right? We're doing this work because we care. We don't want people to live in nursing homes. We want them to live in their communities. We want them to be part of their communities. And for us to you know, get 40 cents above the $15 an hour, that's a slap in the face for all of us. It's a slap in the face for the 7,000 caregivers here in Kern County. This is valuable work. This is valuable work that, you know, you might need it someday. You don't know if you're going to have a stroke, you know? So a lot of, a lot of folks have, you might have a pension, benefits, everything. We don't ha even have that at the end of the day when our patient dies, okay? And this is not only physical work, it's mental work. When I first started working with my grandmother, I was with anxiety, depression, everything, and it's just not my, not just my story. It's Ms. the story of thousands and You're thousands of other caregivers. So right now, we demand that you give us a good raise. When we go back to the table, December first, we want to. We don't want to hear forty cents. Thank we want to hear Ms. more than that. Thank you. Next speaker, please. And we'd ask you to please observe our two-minute time limit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other speakers this morning? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Then we'll move on to board member announcements and reports. I don't, in, unless uh, Mr. Alsop, if you'd like to provide any response to the um, comments that we just heard, provide you that opportunity if you'd like to take it. We meet with them again on December 1st. December 1st. Thank you so much. Item number 10 is board member announcements and reports. Do we have any from the board? Supervisor Peters. Thank you, Chairman. I wanted to discuss some of the issues that we've been having with the elections department uh, this election season. I've heard multiple reports, uh, multiple issues from uh, individuals. Uh, I don't think that there's anything malicious going on, but I don't believe that we're providing the best service that we should be or could be at elections department. So. Um, I'm not an expert in elections by any means. I have some ideas on ways that we might be able to improve that department, but I would like to make a referral to staff that uh, hopefully by our next meeting we can get a range of options on what the board is able or authorized to do as far as taking actions to 
try and make some improvements in the elections department and uh, what, what those might look like, uh, just whatever that full range of options we're allowed to take is. And this, the next meeting would be, is, that, is it December 6th? Am I right on that? Okay, so December 6th is the, is the next meeting. Um, Supervisor Peters, would you um, also be in favor of a report from Ms. Bedard on how the election went? We did that for the primary. Um, I th thought there was some good information, but i um, leave that to you if you would like to include that in your referral. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. And I believe that's the date we're supposed to certify, but... I think the certification is... Mr. Chairman, I did speak with uh, Ms. Bedard and... Um, we won't be able to certify on the 6th, so there's more information coming. I'm wondering if it would be more appropriate to have this report on December 13th, because the, the certification will have taken place by then. Okay, yeah, so just to uh, double check on that, that, that's the certification comes before the board on the 13th? Is that correct? Um, I think maybe we better turn to County Council on this one. Ms. Raison. Good morning. Good morning. It's my understanding that, that uh, the Elections Division, Mary Bedard, needs to certify to the Secretary of State on December 8th, and then we'll certify, we'll bring forward her report to your board on the 13th. <coughs> Um, I, I kind of do have some issues with that. If we're not able to get the information before we're supposed to make that certification, I think that's problematic. So I don't know what we can do to address this at our next meeting. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Sir Rose Brest. Peters, what is your hope from the report? Are you trying to block the certification of the election? No, that's not and what What is the timing of the report matter? Well, I, I would like to, after some of the issues that I've heard as far as I don't know how far we can get down the rabbit hole right now since it's not agendized, but I've heard issues as far as the numbers, the accuracy of numbers that were reported to the Secretary of State, uh, issues with uh, some of the observation that were, was happening, and I just believe that the sooner we get that addressed and find out what's going on, again, I said I don't believe there's anything malicious happening, but I do think that we need to hash out whatever inaccuracies are happening, whatever inefficiencies are going on, and try and drill down on that before we Thank you. Move Can forward. I, Chairman, I'll, I have a question when you're done. Uh, Supervisor Peters. Uh, go, go, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Supervisor Brass. Happy to. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to have a question for Council. What do you, uh, can you give us some advice moving forward? Because uh, it sounds like there's a request for information before we certify an election in a time when this is a huge issue around the country. So uh, I'd, I'd like some clarification about what's going on here, frankly. Uh, Supervisor Perez, through the chair, I've, I, I can't speak to, to what's going on. Also, I, I want to urge some caution because this matter is not agendized for today. Um, I, I don't see a problem with a referral to staff for a report back on information about elections, um, whether it happens before uh, uh, Ms. Bedard certifies the Secretary of State or not, depending on the scope of the report. Um, I think that would be up to the board to decide whether you want to hear that Get, have their staff referral report back uh, either the next board meeting or on the, the 13th. Okay, so what's the day that we certify the election? Right, the, I'm, yeah, the, state, the state's deadline is the 8th. December 8th? Yes. And what's our deadline? I, I think the plan is, is that, and typically what uh, the elections division does is they report, they certify to the Secretary of State, and then at the next board meeting, they report to your board. Okay, so what would need to happen to stop or to not have the certification of the election here? Is anything, can anything happen to stop that? I don't believe so. I guess the board, when they hear Mary Bedard's report on, I think she's planning on bringing it on the 13th, if the board were to refuse to, to take any action, but that it's been certified to the state by the time it's reported to your board. I can look into that. Okay, that's very helpful, actually. Your clarification just helped me very much. So thank you. Peters, thank you. 
Okay. So, Supervisor Peters, um, what's your... So, uh, I would just like to make a referral that we get that range of options sooner rather than later, uh, hopefully by the next meeting, and that way we have an idea of the best way to proceed moving forward. I think we need to do everything we can to help build confidence in our process. And I think by looking at some of the inefficiencies or some of the things that we could have done better in this past election, I think would be a benefit. And so your referral is for this to come back on the 6th of December? Uh, I, I believe so. I don't have the date of our next meeting, but. Madam Clerk, can you confirm that? Yes, the board meets on the 6th. I just want to make sure that you understand that um, Items going on the agenda for the 6th of December were due to the clerk of the board last Friday. We will be posting the agenda on this Thursday, which would be the 1st of December. So we are actually providing county council and the auto controller county clerk a very slim window of opportunity to have that report prepared and ready to be posted on the agenda Thursday afternoon. So I would need that report from them uh, probably this afternoon or at the latest tomorrow in order to have it ready to go to be posted on the agenda on Thursday. That's why I was suggesting December 13th it would provide staff a week to um, look at the options and prepare an actual report. Madam Council, what is your... What is your uh, opinion on the ability to prepare something for the six, given the timeline that the clerk just laid out? Uh, uh, Chairman Scrivener, that, that would be very difficult to get something today or tomorrow, especially when I'm, I would need to talk to uh, Mr. Alsop as well as Mary Bedard, because I think it's a referral if I'm, I don't want to miss misstate uh, what um, Supervisor Peters is looking for, but it might involve more than just information from my office. I think there's probably some information from the elections division that could be incorporated into any, any report. And as they are not here, I couldn't say whether they'd be available to get anything on the agenda by next week. I know they're still very busy um, finalizing the, the election uh, it would be much easier for everybody to report back on the 13th. Um, I can, we, we've previously provided information about the structure of the office uh, of the auditor, controller, uh, county clerk, and I can uh, make that presentation again. But if there's any other information that is being sought, um, I, I, I would need to work can with. With Ms. Bedard and Mr. Alsop. Supervisor Peters. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, uh, I, I just want to know what our options are as a board. I know elections is run by a separately elected individual. I just want to know what this board can do to help strengthen voter confidence in that department, whether it's auditing the processes that happen there, looking at how that turnaround happens, looking at how the count happens to make it more official, to make it more tr or efficient, transparent, uh, et cetera. Just what the board is legally authorized to do to help that department out. And I, I want to throw a report. I want to do something meaningful and productive. So if uh, staff needs more time, I'm definitely amenable to doing it later on the 13th if we need to. Thank you, Supervisor. Mr. Alsop. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Supervisor Peters, I, I, I hear you, and um, if I could make a recommendation, um, the, uh, the state's deadline for certification is the 8th for uh, essentially all, all counties in the state, and um, it's my understanding that uh, our elections division will make that certification uh, by that date. Um, I'm not Oh, sure, at this point, in talking with county council, the item that comes back to your board or, or following certification to the Secretary of State when it comes back to your board, if whether that's a receive and file item or I, I'm not sure what the nature of that item is uh, or what the tradition of that is historically. But to your point, um, my recommendation would be allow uh, elections to, to finish the work that they're doing. Uh, they're quite busy. Uh, um, working on, um, you know, finalizing the election, uh, getting everything uh, 
uh, you know, counted and, and uh, with 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 the utmost due diligence. Um, they're they're quite busy. A turnaround on the sixth uh, to provide you with what I believe you're asking for um, would be uh, uh, somewhat um, more shallow than than I th than I think you're really wanting. Uh, I would recommend allowing elections to uh, to proceed, certify the election, come back on the 13th, provide your board a full report, and in that report, um, discuss with your board some of the things that um, uh, happened um, uh, during this election process, um, good and bad, uh, get it out, and then allow my office to work directly with elections uh, so that we're informed uh, on some of the things that uh, not only elections may recommend uh, be done uh, to, to improve efficiency and speed and everything else, but uh, marry those with some of the things that county council may recommend or my office may recommend and maybe come back to your board uh, following the 13th at the first available uh, board meeting or, or as soon as possible so that we can provide your board a, a really a full scoping and in-depth uh, not only review, but uh, a set of recommendations that we might proceed with uh, collectively going into the next election. Thank you, uh, Mr. Alsop. I, I appreciate that, and I definitely think a r report like that would be beneficial. I think it would help all of us, but I would like to see what the board's options are, just strictly what role we have, what we're able to do, what we're able to bring to bear to help that department out as a board collectively. I don't know if there's, if it's, you know, bringing more resources to the table, if it's changing the way that some of their processes are. And, and I get that your report also would look into that, but I would just like to know uh, for my own edification right now, what, what the board is and is not allowed to do as far as changing some of those processes. You know, it could be, like I said, simple change to some of the processes. It could be something as drastic as separating out the Registrar of Voters Office. I don't know. I'm not suggesting anything. Could be any host of options, but I would like to know what we're able to do in that regard. Thanks, Supervisor. Supervisor Couch. Thank you. Um, question for County Council. Could you recirculate, I think you sent us a memo a few months back on the options with, that Supervisor Peters uh, just alluded to regarding the Registrar of Voters, the County Clerk, um, and the timing, if, if, if that was a direction that was chosen to go, the timing that we would have to, have to utilize. Uh, yes. Okay, thank that. you. And you'd, you'd like that? ahead of the meeting, not as part of the board packet? I, I th well, she, I think it's already written. It's, it it uh, is, yes. I just don't have it handy. Um, so yes, as, as quickly as you could get us, that would be great. Um, in addition, I have a thought that if we have questions that we would like Mary, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, may I? Um, yes, yeah. If we have questions that we would like Ms. Bedard, who is the Auditor Controller, to address in her report, I think we should get those to her as quickly as we can. Obviously, um, we can also ask her questions when she's here. But if we really want her to drill down on something, um, I'm going to think about that a little bit and see if I need to submit her something. And I'll copy you on that, Margo, and you, Ryan, as well. Thank you. Thanks, Supervisor. Any other questions or comments on that? Otherwise, I'll, I'll turn back to Supervisor Peters for a motion on his referral and with a date to come back. Okay, uh, thank you. I'll make a motion that we return on uh, December 13th or at our uh, two meetings from now, if that uh, is amenable to, to staff, or at least for that, that portion of the referral. Okay, great. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. Four ayes, one absent. Supervisor Perez. Thank you. Are any other board member announcements or reports? Okay, seeing none, then we do have, uh, that brings us to the conclusion of our agenda in open session. However, we do have three items to consider in closed session, and items 51 and 52 are under county council, or sorry, excuse me, a county administrative office, and item 53 under county council. So I'll entertain a motion this time to adjourn to closed session. So moved.
Bear Journey.